Hello, everyone, and welcome to the HPL Gallery's Artist Talk series. My name is Jennifer, and I am one of the curators of the Visual Arts Exhibitions Program at the Hoover Public Library. And today I'm so thrilled to talk with artist and educator Ty Smith. Ty teaches at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. He is a painter, um, but he very often drifts into the genre of drawing. And his subject matter um, is primarily form, color, line, and the materiality of his surfaces. So with that, I'll leave it there and turn it over to Ty to introduce himself a little bit more and to uh, give us a little tour of his work. So thank you again, Ty, for joining us today. And how are you? Thank you, Jennifer. I'm doing just great. I'm really excited to spend this time with you and with the viewers and talk a little bit about my work. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen if that's okay with you. That's great, just jump right in. All right, here we go. Not the most tech savvy. I have a little confidence uh, with it, but um, yeah, as Jennifer said, I, I'm a artist here in Birmingham, Alabama. Actually, a year ago yesterday, uh, I live now in Hoover. Uh, so it's been a year that we've been in a Hoover uh, community. So that's really exciting. Um, I'm a painter and drawer um, and an educator. I'll talk more about the idea of painting and drawing a bit. Um, I'm also a father of three, and I, during my day, I take care of them, look after them, and I do a lot of my teaching in the afternoon or in the evenings when I teach online. And then my painting is also in the evenings, uh, if it doesn't go into the early morning. <laughs> um, so I'll show you a little bit about the work. And as Christina had mentioned last week, she this is also my first time to kind of look over my work and talk about it using the website. So I'm looking forward to this and going through it as well. Uh, I'll start by looking maybe at some paintings. The way I have the website laid out and organized is chronological. And I'll probably hop around a little bit because I really don't <clears throat> consider the newer work to be more significant or important to me as as ideas as, as the previous or the past work, so. Do I'm that cool uh, full screen thing too. Okay. Yeah, here is like kind of a, the images I have loaded on the website right now today. Ty, go full screen with it. Let's see. There you go. All right, how's that look? That's nice. All right, let's get rid of this. Does that work okay? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll flip through the images a little bit just so I can give a little bit of context, but, uh, actually this is a kind of a good example because one of the things that I, um, do think quite a bit about is, is drawing and I participate and I work on drawing pretty much daily in some way. And, uh, I think I came into painting more as an extension of drawing and, maybe a little less about painting directly. And there's other painters that I think of as real natural painters. And I probably think of myself as maybe more of a natural drawer. Mm -hmm. And you'll probably see that in the work or get that feeling. Um, and there are some differences. There's a, quite a bit of differences, I think. And actually the more I've kind of moved into my practice of painting and drawing or a career, if you want to use that word, is I, I have realized more of the, the differences of painting and drawing. Um, obviously through the history of image making and two dimensional work, painting and drawing have a very strong relationship and connection. But um, so this is one of the newer paintings that I have said for myself will is finished and and I showed it recently this past year um, at a school here in Birmingham, Alabama School of Fine Art. And, um, and it kind of has both worlds. There's some new steps that I'm making in this particular painting. Um, the scale is 28 inches tall. I'll try to show you all some installation shots for more um, idea of the scale. 
but it was a, a painting that I, that I was a little surprised about. I didn't plan to stop at this point. Um, maybe there was four or five sessions. I remember being very patient, trying to be more aware of my own uh, sense of energy or my sense of concentration and trying not to overwork something and trying to keep a sense of uh, like something fresh. That's, that was something that was really on my mind when I was working on this particular painting. And I was also trying to challenge myself in some of the color ideas. And so as Jennifer and I have talked over the weeks and over the months about kind of this idea of line and color, that this painting in particular has, I think, a nice combination of the two. Um, color is probably what's on my mind the most right now, but I can't help it. I have a, I have some kind of instinct or need to find the, the color through drawing. And I can talk a little bit more about how I think about drawing or how I might define drawing. But this painting in particular is, is really on my mind a lot right now. And I have other paintings in progress that are in extensions of this. I really don't work in groups the way that I, <clears throat> actually the way that I wish that I would. I'm, I'm kind of envious of artists that, that seem to uh, stay in particular, in a particular focus or a specific focus and kind of work within a body of work. I think I'm doing that a little bit more right now. I'm not, I'm not consciously trying to, um, but I think it's just the nature of what I'm, what I'm pursuing or what I feel that I'm focused on. One of the things that is specific about uh, kind of a new change is the idea of, and I'll say it in a more casual way, of, of like bending a line or bending an edge. In more of my history of painting and drawing, maybe not all of my history, but the last, say, 10 years has been really focused and has been built out of a type of grid. Um, and the grid is frontal and it's more about divisions. And I tend to use a straight edge of some kind in order to make the marks. And I have over the last maybe year, year and a half, I won't say that I was bored with that, but I wanted more out of it and I wanted to move my hand more. I wanted to be more free in my movement. And uh, that's where drawing with a, cur a curve started to happen. And this is kind of something that you see in a lot of artists doing this. And one of my, my undergraduate professor, my, some of my fondest memories of visiting his studio was always seeing his collection of of it, drawing extensions or sticks with with charcoal tape to the ends, and he would often draw a lot like that. As you see, artists like Bryce Marden or some of the famous photographs of Matisse when he was ill, you know, in the bed or working on murals. And I think there is a, a logical um, reasoning for doing that, which which is to draw more with your arm, or you could even say more with your body. Um, which gives you a more, perhaps a more continuous, more fluid uh, line. And that's something that I've been doing a lot more in the paintings. I've been actually drawing with uh, charcoal on the painting with, say, maybe a three or four foot stick. And, uh, and I've liked the way that it gives me more, more movement. I'll see how much. Now, this actually may seem like a little bit more of a, an abrupt change. Uh, this was like the last painting that I was really dealing with where I was only working within this, this, using a straight edge. But this was also one of the first paintings that I was being very particular or, or more focused on pushing myself in terms of the color. Now, I mean, within my friends and, and whatnot, uh, the idea of me painting only in green is always kind of a joke. And even though I don't feel that way myself, but uh, this painting was definitely um, a focus of a, a kind of a range of 
this color of green, and I'm always thinking about um, the complexity of greens. So that is a part of the painting. And I, but more more importantly, I thought, and and maybe even more importantly than the color itself. And this is something I, when I was kind of preparing for the for our conversation, I was thinking about this quite a bit. Is is I have a very specific interest in what we tend to call as figured ground, which is also another way of saying, um, you know, giving presence to atmosphere. A lot of times, uh, like working maybe with students, you might refer to things as positive and negative spaces. Um, what I'm interested in is uh, somehow giving weight to the spaces that seem open. Uh, you might say that there are spaces in between forms. Um, and that's something that I'm really focused on is providing uh, weight or finding weight uh, within those, those open areas. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with figure ground, the figure is generally something that you feel has weight, like a figure itself or a tree, if you're going to paint a tree. So what I'm really interested in is painting the spaces around the tree. That would be a real focus for me if I were to set up and paint outside. This was a painting made for Mary Oliver. I think she had actually not passed at the time, but I was going back reading some new, some new poetry of hers and it was, she, it was a kind of connection that I felt from her writing. And so this was, uh, this painting was kind of in tribute to her. I'm not going to go through all the, the paintings, but I may just flip through them a little bit. And I may talk a little bit more about the idea of line and color as well. And one of the things that Jennifer and I kind of, I think we, we would end up talking quite a bit about would be this idea of maybe texture or surface uh, coming out of that. One of the, <clears throat> I don't really know if I would call it a limitation, but one of the things that I have, that I really don't have, and I, and I, and I don't say that to, to suggest that I want it. I mean, oftentimes I do want it. But for instance, if, if, if you took a painter that was working from a still life or the landscape, then that information, what they're looking at, working from observation, would give them a very specific form. I'm using the word form kind of general here, but it gives them something to respond to and something to uh, even trust. They, they use it as an anchor or a structure to then make decisions from. And that is something that I'm involved in. I, I draw uh, often from life. I believe it's terribly important. And uh, so I, I still stay involved in that kind of practice, but for whatever reason, when I'm in the studio, I tend to, it, it feels more personal for me to seek out these other kind of investigations where they're maybe perhaps more inventive. Um, that's not in contrast to say that working from observation is not inventive, but I don't have something in front of me in which I'm trying to commit myself to. So because of that, uh, for a number of years, I was kind of, uh, I was a little bit more all over the place in a sense of I didn't, I did not have something to trust. I really didn't have a beginning. Um, I, it was just all intuitive. I was changing everything constantly. So I'm, what I'm saying in this, I want to bring up the fact that for a number of years now, I have worked with this specific type of grid or division where you make halves. So you kind of start with, um, I don't know if you can see my cursor again, but you start with making a division from opposite corners that gives you the center. And then you begin to kind of divide the painting up in that way. I, I was reading some, uh, some writings by the artist Jack Torkoff. And I think he was talking about this where he made a transition from making only emotionally driven marks and decisions to providing himself some kind of rule, set of rules 
And the rules were rules that he was imposing. So it wasn't rules like you think of as like, I, I'm an artist, I don't want rules. It was, a, it was a set of rules that would allow him to investigate uh, what was happening within the painting. And it also provided maybe a little more repetition and a, and a way for him to move right into the, the, the practice of painting and the investigation of painting. This was a painting that you're looking at, and I don't mean to keep the screen on it for too long, but um, this was a painting I felt that had kind of that middle world where I was, I'm still really using the, the, the lines. And, I, and, I, and really, you know, when I think about it, I really don't even think of it as a grid. I, I just think of it as a type of mark that's linear and it, does seem to move through the space in a geometric way and it makes shapes. So in that sense, yeah, I think, I think I would maybe say it relates with a grid, but I still feel that it's not quite as, um, as systematic as, as, as a, as an all over grid. It, it gives me a, a way to make a decision, make a mark, make a line. And then normally I say, no, I don't like it there. And I move it. So that's kind of the idea. I, I need, because I don't have an image, say, of someone sitting for me, like I'm going to make a portrait, it does not give me something uh, to trust right away. So what I'm kind of left with is, is only my, uh, I think it's two things. I'm left with my intu intuition, and I'm left with my, my own memory or my own history of image making things that I'm curious about. So maybe I make one type of painting uh, and then that drives me or gives me interest to make a different kind of painting. So that, that also sets up something maybe more, more specific. You know, artists that are important to me, uh, there's so many. Um, actually, one of the, that's one of the things we were talking about was just kind of like where <clears throat> painting comes from for me specifically. I don't think that this would be all artists. But I really came to painting by falling in love with painters. I mean, I fell in love with drawings. I remember the, I remember I, I ended up actually becoming an art major in undergraduate. I really didn't, you know, grow up in a household where I was, you know, visiting the museum or anything like that. I wasn't really aware of, uh, what it meant to be an artist or that you could even be an artist and what that would look like. I certainly wasn't shown any kind of a history of art making. Um, but what I, but when I went to undergraduate, I, I happened to receive a scholarship and I was, uh, and then I had to commit to being an art major. So I was immediately thrown into my, my art classes. And one of the first classes I ever took, there was a Xerox copy of a figure drawing by artist uh, Richard Diebenkorn. And I remember being so struck by the image and I, and I really didn't know what I was looking at, but I did have a feeling that I wanted to figure out what this was. And I even wanted to pursue this. Um, and the image has kind of this thing that I'm still involved in, is this kind of in-between world of painting and drawing and how they're, how they relate and how they're different. So I think actually this image that's on the screen now too is kind of another extension of that. Um, but I think, I think the thing that, 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 you know, to kind of go back to this figure ground and this difference in line and color and, and what, uh, one thing that happens is when you do not have a, a, a form that you're using often, you don't know how to, uh, uh, I don't want to use the word judge, but you don't know how to critically think about the painting always. You know, you'll kind of second guess yourself. And one of the things that the, that the linear marks was giving me was I generally had an intuitive feeling of if it felt right or if it uh, needed to change in some way. So that's really why I decided uh, several years ago to commit to using these linear moves to investigate and, and, and actually and make paintings.
So this, this painting kind of actually is another painting kind of in homage to a painter. His name was Jake Berto. Um, and I think in this, in this particular painting, this painting is 24 inches tall by 20 uh, wide. Maybe I worked on it for a couple months and it probably went through a lot of changes. Um, but I was trying to let go and allow the color to move on top or forward of some of the more linear decisions. And I was, I was trying to push myself in not relying only on the compositional moves or the linear marks that I was really pushing and looking for uh, more specific tones or more specific color uh, transitions that might occur. And I was really hoping, and I think actually this particular painting is successful in this, and, and that is that when you're when you don't have an image in front of you, say you have uh, someone sitting for you, like a Giacometti, you know, painting a portrait or making a sculpture from a sitter, you know that that kind of uh, that kind of image or form that uh, that he's responding to also helps establish the composition and it holds uh, the image making. Well, when you when you start to make an image or make a painting or make a drawing where you don't have a reference, you don't have something in front of you that you're observing, then a lot of, uh, it, it's so open-ended that it can become uh, overwhelming. And I think for me, I was trying to push this particular painting to a point that I felt the color would hold the structure, that the, that the color or the color relationships or the values would, would hold uh, the image as, as a whole. And one of the things that also is difficult about that, and this would be maybe a longer conversation, um, but you're always dealing with the back and forth of the particulars and the unified singular whole. And, uh, kind of what I mean by that, and I think I'll just scroll through, Jennifer, some of these images, but one of, uh, one of the things I'm talking about about this is like, one of the things that you're provided by, say, a landscape is uh, nature, I mean, it, I guess this would be a, a debate, but I think that nature is a representation of unity. And when you're working from observation, there is a unified uh, source for you there. There's a unified image. And I think as I'm kind of working on these paintings and struggling through these images, I struggle to balance both the working on particular areas that I'm interested in, more subtle moves or more detailed specific moves, and still establishing an all over uh, unity uh, like a, a singular organization that that again I think is one thing that uh, working from observation gives you is it, it it's it's unifying right away at least I feel that way that's one of the reasons that we encourage uh, educators uh, in drawing or painting that we might encourage students to draw from life or to paint from life because that information is there and they can, they can make decisions from it and they can even compare their decision making. This is an interesting painting. It's a little more unique for me, I think. Um, I actually, I painted this in one city and then I hated it and I put it away. And I thought I kind of ruined everything. And I think I moved here to Birmingham. Maybe this was from Auburn to Birmingham. And uh, I got it out and I put it on my wall and I just loved it. And uh, maybe there was a year and a half in between that experience. But I remember being kind of kind of shocked that I felt um, kind of good or I felt like there was a strength to the painting. I think at the time when I started thinking about it, I wasn't 
I wasn't ready to let go of certain things that I was maybe wanting to do in, in painting or trying to do. And I think once I had moved and had some changes in my life or maybe just time away from looking at the image, maybe there was a new kind of excitement there for me. Um, so that, that was an interesting uh, experience, I think. That, you know, I think one thing that artists often get asked is how you know when to stop on something. And I, I don't ever have a good answer for that. I don't really know. I'm kind of notorious for just painting over things over and over and which, which I kind of don't mind. I, that's kind of what I'm looking for, but, but there are, there are occasions I think where you feel something came together or perhaps uh, you're surprised by what happened. Uh, I think a lot of times too, people feel that artists have a vision and then they kind of seek that vision out. And then it's more or less a matter of working out technically or working out the amount of time or the labor involved in that. Um, and for me, it's, it's very different experience. I, I might finish a painting on a given day and then I, I may work on another painting for a year or two. I, I just really don't know. And sometimes I do have stronger feelings for how a painting may be going or how it's developing or how it's building. Um, I'm very fond of this particular painting. I, I think um, it was a it was one of the paintings where I was working on this kind of geometry linear division, but that I felt there was still an openness to the marks and to the atmosphere, where it wasn't only about the geometry. Um, you know, I also have kind of. I don't know how much I should go into this, but there, there are times where the romantic side of me really believes in mystery. And I believe in um, even kind of magical qualities, magical things that can occur within painting. Um, painting is kind of, I mean, I kind of think it's weird, actually. I, it's such a private thing. I, I mean, one of the things I'm so I'm so uh, interested in painting I'm, that I stay involved with painting is that it seems to be uh, deeply personal, or it can be personal. And I know, I know, obviously, a lot of things can be personal. I mean, music can be incredibly impersonal, but there's something about the way that painting is shared that remains one to one. It remains. Um, artist maker to viewer and even that experience is not uh together unless you're standing together talking about a particular painting uh it, it the experience of looking at painting uh is very private uh again unlike maybe not completely unlike but a lot of times i'm jealous of musicians because they can share their music in so many different ways. And, and painting seems to be much more um, inward and private. And, but again, even though I'm, I'm jealous of uh, other fields that, that, that can involve kind of groups of people or you can participate in various ways, I'm also just completely in love and, and, and taken by painting how it, it is more one-to-one -one and how it is private. I mean, that it is my personality to, I'm much more comfortable within a one-to-one -one relationship or conversation. And I think it's too, because I can give my full attention to who it is I'm, I'm speaking with. Now, a lot of these paintings that I'm showing now, they're on a smaller scale. And then a lot of these, this was, Maybe when I had a different studio, I had a larger studio. I think this painting is, is about seven feet tall. And this is something I'm really trying to return to. I think this painting is six or seven feet as well. Um, I'm trying, I, I, I'm, I'm, I miss painting more with my, my body. And, and I have kind of made maybe two paintings uh, since moving to Birmingham that are 
that are larger in scale. But this is something that I'm really thinking about is trying to paint larger again. And I, I don't kind of have any favoritism toward painting larger. I mean, I'm very fond of painting on the smaller paintings. I mean, I just, I'm really uh, committed to both. And I think, but I also think they're very unique experiences uh, as an image maker, as a painter. This is one uh, I made, I think, close to finishing graduate school. And I had, uh, I was really surprised by this painting. It went through a lot of revisions. Um, and actually kind of looking at it now and, and thinking about it over the week, I'm also kind of wanting to find uh, maybe a, a return to certain energy. Um, and I think that would again be in contrast to um, using the, the, the geometry, kind of challenging myself, getting away from, getting away from the geometry. Um, so as Jennifer was pointing out, I stay really involved in drawing and I'll kind of give you a context of what the, uh, my drawing practice is kind of focused around. Again, these are chronological and anyone, if you're interested, you can kind of go back and take a look at these uh, on the site. Um, but I think I've been drawing, I've always drawn in charcoal. I remember in, in undergraduate, I was only allowed to draw with um, compressed charcoal. We more or less drew the figure and the figures. And, uh, and I was also encouraged from the very beginning to use my eraser as much as um, I did the, the charcoal. And I think that kind of stuck with me quite a bit. Um, <laughs> sorry if you hear my kids screaming over there. This is definitely a, this is real life right here. Um, Love it, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, this particular drawing, I think I, is, is maybe more recent within the last year or so. And this is where I, I see myself maybe making more. I'll just kind of walk through. A lot of the charcoal drawings, though, at least over the last few years, I have used a straight edge. I, it's not that I want the, uh, it's not that I want a straight line necessarily, but the straight edge gives me a way to uh, just dive right in. As, and, and I might be a little more hesitant to only draw freehand at the beginning. It, it also allows me to use repetition. So say I have a vertical line and I feel that there's a certain energy to that mark, then I can repeat that vertical line. Like a good example of that would be, you know, I think it stands out this vertical line here, but then <clears throat> I can make another mark that's similar or repetitive in another way, and then it might change in terms of uh, scale, and it sets up a, a spatial relationship. I won't get into all of that, but I'm certainly interested, as many painters and drawers are, in spatial relationships and in creating uh, space. Uh, space meaning, you know, you probably, especially with students, it's more common to hear the word depth or a sense of depth. A lot of students say that they want to learn to draw with more depth. And for whatever reason, I, I tend to just think of it as being more spatial. Um, so I tend to use the word uh, finding space or, I'm really fond of this drawing too. This, this particular drawing, I would kind of return to using uh, the, charcoal, the charcoal medium with gesso and that was something that early on in undergraduate I was I was always forced to do is to use some type of water-based paint medium with my drawing and uh, so I remember really struggling through this through this drawing for quite a while and I think I made this over maybe two years um, even maybe even different cities but uh, I remember at the at the time I felt it came together. It was because I used and I just kind of a, a gut response pulled out this gesso and 
started painting out things that I didn't like and it gave a, a different kind of energy I thought I think to the to the image so I was really pleased with that you know one of these ideas too like going back to this like romantic kind of side which I'm, I'm uncomfortable even saying that word for some reason um, but I but I'm really interested and I think that in, in a way these are these these are in these are contrasting thoughts, but I like the sense of spending time with something over over a length of time, and also finding something you, unique, fresh, new, whatever that is. And often I I feel that the the parallel there is to having long-term friendships or long-term relationships of any kind where you you continue that relationship because that relationship continues to feed you in some way it continues to give you new experiences um and i i think that that is something i'm a, a bit obsessed with actually in painting and drawing and it's not very helpful actually sometimes um, but I, I just can't seem to let go of it. And I, I just think it's my way. Um, but I, I want to stick with something and I want to see where something might take me. And so I think that the romantic notion of that is the fact of finding something that you actually feel you did not make, making an image that actually seems as though it made itself or you stumbled across it. And, and maybe that is a little bit romantic, but that kind of goes back to this sense of discovery, the sense of surprise. And I, I do believe that what happens is the viewer then senses that discovery, senses that, that surprise or that, and and they're, they that's what they end up responding to. And because I don't have again this this image or this source that I'm that I'm relying on or using, I I think what it is that I feel a need to find is is that moment that that something really special has occurred, something beyond just my uh, intelligence or my ability to put myself in that position by following a couple steps, you know. That's what makes the idea of confidence so kind of awkward and, and difficult to talk about. Uh, I mean, obviously, I think artists develop confidence, and they, and they should just because they're involved in something for so long. But you also feel this incredible sense of insecurity and, and like everything's falling apart and that nothing's good and nothing is has any substance to it. And so you're waiting to be surprised and encouraged again to do something kind of beyond yourself. And I think that that's actually common day to day. You know, I mean, how often do you maybe have a conversation with someone and you go away, whether it's someone that you knew or didn't know, and you just felt, wow, that was, that was really wonderful. That just went so, it was so fluid. You know, it just seemed effortless. And I think that's something I'm looking for. I'm, I'm looking to, I'm, I'm willing to struggle for as long as possible to then find something that feels effortless. You know, I, I finished watching this, that, uh, the documentary on the Bulls and Michael Jordan. And, and that, that's something that kind of reminded me of like his, his work ethic. But then he does something and us as the, the audience, you know, and I would say whether it's dancers or musicians or athletes or whoever it is, there is something really amazing and mesmerizing, captivating when someone does something that, that you think they're so skilled at. So you know that they put all this time into it, but then they make it look so easy and effortless. I absolutely love that. And I, I think that's what I want in my in the work I, I want there to be this fresh energy this sense of um you know i, I, I i'm probably just trying to say it over and over the same thing but i, I want that fresh 
uh, quality, you know, that energy to feel alive. Well, there's a lot, of, there's an accumulation of your hand and your time that you spend with each piece. And so that's building and it's an archive of the time that you've devoted to yeah. looking and seeing and mark making and there's, it's labor intensive. And so each piece is like it, its own little archive of the time that you spent with that painting. I think it is. And, and, and I think, again, that's, it's hard to say it, that it's that it's only drawing or only painting, but often drawing and painting that seems to be mysterious. That 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 a image that is not changing in front of you as the viewer still gives you a sense of time. It mm -hmm. it, it reveals, it shows the viewer, and you feel all those changes, all those decisions, those thoughts, and whatever. You know, and I think that's really mysterious that a painting or a drawing can can actually hold that that complexity inside of it, and then a and then a viewer that's open and willing that they can then pull that out of that image, you know, or, or experience that. Um, so of course, I'm I'm in, I'm interested in complexity. I mean, I, I want something uh, that is is rich. That, that has a certain history to it that might not be, again, an intellectual history, but it has a, a history of its own. Mm -hmm. Right, there's a memory in each piece. There's a memory, I think that there's a memory. And, and I was thinking again about that idea of the, the memory. And I think a lot of the, I think, I think often what a painter is left with or, or an artist or drawer, and I'll just talk specifically about two-dimensional artists, you're, you're really left with what the surface is giving to the viewer. And, and I think that is what is terribly important to me is the, the feeling of the hand, the, what the hand, the experience of the hand with the materials on the surface. And that, that's probably why I'm, I use the eraser so often is it it gives a kind of a, a history it gives it, it it affects and changes the surface uh, in such a way that's that seems different than just if I were to know I wanted to make this image and then draw those lines I don't think I would be able to 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 find it in the same way without allowing myself to be open for it to change I mean, by this point, I just know it's just all going to change. And, and so even though there are times I get frustrated because I think I'm kind of, you know, maybe close with something. Um, these are good examples of that. I, these are uh, new, newer paint, uh, newer drawings. And they were a way for me to, uh, again, like what I said at the very beginning, maybe to draw more with my arm and create maybe more movement within the image. Um, but it was also a way that I was using, I'm still erasing a lot, but I'm using various ink washes and I would kind of paint over the whole surface and it would kind of hide some of my previous moves. And again, it, and I think deep down, I, I, it was actually a way for me to think more about painting through drawing. And perhaps that's, uh, that's a better way of saying it. But when I would do this kind of all over wash, it would affect uh, certain things in terms of like emphasis or what stood out. And so it would, it would influence my next decision. Or in some cases, it may have even resolved the drawing. Or I might have decided to leave it the way it was, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm interested in using drawing for painting I'm fond of this one too. I, it's hard for me not at this point now not to, you know, I, I started with the Degas, which was then a figure, and it didn't take long for the figure to also then feel like a tree or some type of branch. And in other cases, they also feel like uh, rocks. Oh. And 
here in Birmingham, I, in the last maybe two years, I've really been studying the Cahaba River recently, and I'm seeing a lot of images on maps and things of that. And, and it's, it's interesting seeing the, the way that the river curves and bends. But I think that was kind of a natural extension of me wanting a different kind of mark within the drawing that wasn't only like a straight line. Um, and I, cause I think it gives a different kind of energy too. And it also started to leave more of the reference of the center of the image. Like in this case, it seems like a lot of the forms are maybe pushed more to the left as opposed to building out of the center. Um, you know, I think that there's some areas in, in these, some of these drawings, and this is why I love someone like Matisse, if you study his, his drawings, is he, he's able, he, he pushes the, the drawing in such a way that the line work feels as though it's pushed into the paper. Or he even erases to a point where you feel the paper comes up to the line, you know? And I love that. It, it, that to me is where uh, part of the atmospheric qualities start to, to come about or are or, or created. And again, I kind of think of it as the ground, but I can look at areas like in here and here, and I can feel that they actually take on as much presence as an, as an area that may feel it has a more particular focus or something, you know. Probably not saying that too well. But that, that's the figure ground kind of relationship of wanting everything to feel as though it's significant and, and plays a role in the overall picture. I think these are the last of this group. So I feel like I'm talking a, a, a ton, so I'm not gonna go into all of, all of these, but I do wanna just mention that I spent a lot of time working uh, on what I tend to call artist studies, where this is from a Degas image. This was maybe, 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 you know, 15 years ago, worked on this one. And so I work on these quite a bit. Um, and they kind of give me a way to, to study, kind of gives me a way to maybe consider new moves or new complexities that I'm not aware of or, you know, don't feel comfortable with or confident in. Or, it's also kind of a funny way of, I've always felt that all these, these artists that I'm so fond of, that they, they seem as though they're still alive for me and um, that I'm getting to kind of talk with them through their work. And so I like, I like that. I'm sure, again, musicians feel the same way about music that they may play that's not their own. But again, this, so this is from a Rembrandt. And it doesn't really matter to me if the drawing or the artist study, you know, looks exactly like the original work. I mean, I am trying to stay as true as I can to what it is I'm looking at, but because I think of it more as an investigation or a study, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm really trying to make more visible uh, my own particular interest, my focus, what it is that I'm paying attention to in particular. And this is, there's a long history of artists drawing from other artists. So that's, this is from a Renoir when I worked at the museum in, in Auburn. Uh, it was nice. I would go through the collection and take a break and draw from the work. Um, so I spent a lot of time working on uh, these studies in various materials and, and techniques. And, uh, and then what ends up happening is, you know, I, I discover something in the work and then it kind of pushes me or pushes me to try a new move in my own work. The more colorful one was from Chardin and these last few were from Cezanne. This is from Picasso. So I'm really involved in these and there's also this feeling of like, there's not as much pressure on it, Like you're not, it's not a self-imposed pressure, you know, so 
it could be late at night and you know it could be early in the morning or whatever and you just you just want to think about painting and drawing and, and but you're not really sure what to do in your own studio so you just start drawing from an image these are these are interesting because they're studies from the same image this is a brock painting um and you know if it just turns out terrible just throw it in the trash can <laughs> so i like i like that as well um but i think it has something again to do with this idea that i i don't i have not committed to a reliable image to use for drawing and painting and so when i do an artist study or i, or I study a, an artist's work it gives me something to it gives me something specific to go right into, you know, as opposed to it being as open-ended as it usually is in the studio for me. Because a lot of times, and this is kind of a funny analogy, but I've said this in class, but, you know, it's like it's that, that feeling at the end of the day, you're like, well, what am I going to eat for dinner, you know? And you think, well, I could, I don't know, there's, I don't know. <laughs> but if someone said, a couple options, you know, do you want to go get pizza, you know, or whatever, do you want to do this or that? You you generally have a more of a feeling, you know, you say, oh yeah, yes or no, you know. And so I kind of use these marks or these lines or these borrowed forms as a way to just make a response from. It's not that I feel that I'm gonna keep it. I just feel that I I need something to get me going and something to respond to. I mean, I've always said, this might be the last one, this is another day go off. This, I've always thought that drawing and painting both are responsive processes. You know, it's a, one of my, my graduate school teachers said it was a visual conversation. You know, and I love that. You know, it's this dialogue back and forth, you know, and one affects the other one will push the other into a certain direction, you know, and uh, you can both get to know that and you can both be surprised by it. Um, a lot of the other images, I, again, if anyone's interested, I made a new menu here just for this conversation of things that might <clears throat> provide maybe more context, uh, thinking about maybe my art making, in the big picture, uh, I'll show you a few installation pictures. You're welcome to maybe look through these. I tried to arrange them in such a way that they might uh, create uh, a connection one after the other. Um, this is one of my daughters here. I forget, I think she was maybe two at the time, but I think this was one of our faculty shows. Um, but I think it is often nice to see, you know, ideally the, the paintings and the drawings are seen in person. But if that's not the case, that I do think that seeing installation images, you know, it helps give perhaps more context um, for what the work is about, or what the work is, or how the experience of looking at the work might be. Uh, these are all pretty, pretty current from this last uh, show at ASFA here, uh, this, I think it was this past year, or this year. And then I have some examples here of maybe drawing from life or invented drawings. Um, I'll show you a few kind of paintings that I have in progress right now uh, in my studio, which is kind of slow going, but these are images that I'm that I have on my mind right now. And I've, I've kind of returned some to using this, these geometric moves, these linear divisions. And then I've also uh, pushed more of these, uh, like I, I, I keep, I, it's like bending a line. I keep saying like, if you take a straight line and you bend it, then it changes some of the suggestion. And uh, so I'm trying to incorporate that into the paintings again uh, and I you know I just don't know where they're gonna go I I need I really need more time to maybe consider the next steps you know 
that, you know, this may be more of a concept, but one of the things that might be an extension of my own personality, but it's something I'm interested in for, for painting and for drawing is for there to be a certain thoughtfulness to the work. Um, but through that thoughtfulness, I also want there to be a sense of action. And I think the ideal thing would be to push those together as though they seem one, that you have thoughtful action, you know, um, or action that is thoughtful. And a lot of times, because painting is, you know, that you, you kind of, you exist in this kind of this back and forth of being excited about what an image might be doing and then also insecurity. You know, for me, my I seem to make better decisions when I'm when I give myself some patience and really spend time looking at the the work as though it's not mine. And it's I'm hoping that through that time spent looking that I have more sense of direction or clarity of where to make a new, a new step, you know? Uh, and I think what ends up happening is that you're actually getting to know the work as opposed to forcing a certain, you know, interest or will upon it, you know, and it becomes more of a, of a listening situation. I think this is maybe the thing that I have going maybe the most at this point. One of the things that I would really like to do, I should, I should try to put this together. <clears throat> I'd love to make a proposal for a show. This is, an, this is a painting on paper I made from memory <clears throat> maybe over 10 years ago. But I would love to put together a show, as I was telling Jennifer earlier this week, where the emphasis really wasn't on, you know, is this new work or is this old work necessarily, but try to curate or, or organize a show of work that has a, uh, a, like a big picture in mind, you know, find, finding work where it doesn't matter when it was made, if there is some overlap or connection and putting those works together, say they're made 10 years apart or 15 or 20 years apart, if there's a strong connection between the two of them, then I think that that might say something strongly about what, what it is the artist is interested in, what they seem to be committing themselves to or what they seem to be uh, looking for in their in their experience and work as an artist. So I'm, so I'm interested in that in that idea. I would like to maybe put together a show like that where you felt you could combine artist studies and and I did I did kind of test that out here recently and I I, I had good feelings about about that. So maybe it's building my confidence to to try it again. Um, one more thing I might point out, this would maybe be a more specific idea, is, you know, this is maybe, <clears throat> these are, this is maybe more drawings that I have going that are kind of small with the charcoal and the stick and the ink wash. But one thing that I'm, uh, that I'm kind of pushing is uh, not having lines, um, extend as far. So I'm making, smaller marks. So maybe a line like this is, a, is more continuous. You know, it goes the length of the sheet of paper or the space. And I'm kind of interested in exploring more mark making where the lines are not as long or continuous, but they're more independent. And I think that I, maybe one of these drawings, and I think of both of these drawings, all of these drawings as finished drawings, but they're not, they're still a little bit, they're finished in the sense that I don't feel a need to do anything to it. And I'm still curious to, to spend time looking at them and studying what they are 
or what it is I'm interested in. But I, but like for instance, I think this has more of a the combination of all of that. And certainly the the this drawing here, <clears throat> this uh, newer charcoal drawing, I think is my first kind of stab at this where uh, the, the, the marks seem to be independent or floating, if you want to use that word. Uh, they really don't make tradition, a traditional sense of composition. It's more to do with uh, scale and perhaps repetition or it, it's inventing a space in a, in a very different way. And I don't know how that's going to tie into the painting. I'm, I'm actually a little freaked out by, by that part of it, but I'll just, um, it'll just kind of happen, I think, naturally. But this is maybe where my mind is for the, for the drawing right now, is letting go of these like continuous marks. All right, so that's, that's a group there. What do you think, Jennifer? Well, you know, I mean, I have some questions, but you've done such a great job of filling the time. Um, I don't even really feel like we need to go into them. Um, okay. You know, just, just as a spontaneous reflection that I've never really had before, um, I feel like your work is so much about, um, <laughs> it's just about lines. Uh -huh. you know, and it's also like about the process of mark making too, in yeah. a very scholarly way in the study of that. Uh -huh. I see so much history of your, your study in your work. Yeah. You know, I see like an accumulation of those four years of undergraduate school and then the graduate yeah. school. Like I see it, it's like, there's this like education of line and study of line and it's just, yeah. it's crazy Ty. Um, but yeah, I mean, we should wrap it up cause we, we have gone on. Um, I think one thing that we've got about 45 minutes so we can, we can wrap it. Um, well, I was going to say, you know, one, one thing that I, you know, I don't, I don't know if I, I mean, I'm fine to say that I'm an abstract painter, abstract artist. I don't really know if I, that's the perfect kind of way of saying it. But, mm -hmm. but one thing that, that does seem to be common that, you know, if you were just ask you know, kind of the general public about what they enjoy seeing in terms of two dimensional work, especially students in my drawing 100 classes, you know, there, a lot of them want to, to uh, draw with line. They, they want, People enjoy seeing sketchy like drawings. You know, there's there's yeah. something about line that is very attractive to people. It it's maybe it's something that they feel they that they have more comfort in looking at. You know, uh, that they can follow a line, mm -hmm. or they think the line is saying something about maybe an object or something. It's the beginning or something. Maybe it's the beginning. Yeah, and so. And I don't think that I am like, I'm certainly not like, oh, I accept that idea. And now I'm going to like pursue that. Um, but I think that, I think I have a little bit of that, you know, where I, I'm, I'm interested in, 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 in investigating, learning to use marks in as many ways as I can. And, and what can that, what's the potential there for what it might express or, or show, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I, and I do believe you could spend your lifetime and probably more than one lifetime, uh, and, you know, looking into that, learning more about it, you know, mm -hmm. again, I mean, I think I, I keep going back to this idea of like musicians, you know, I mean, there's certain limitations physically to say playing the guitar or the piano, but then, but at the same time, there are no limitations, you know? So it's a matter of staying involved and exploring, I think. And I think that there's something rich in that, you know, um, that longevity, you know? So at least that's something that I'm, I seem to be, I seem to have committed my life to. 
mm-hmm. even though it seems crazy at times, you know, like, why am I doing this? But, um, but I, but I love it. So, and I, and I feel that, um, I'm not even close to finding what it is that can be done through it and what, I, what it is that I, at least I want to do through it and with it, you know? Okay, well, I guess we should end there, even though I hate to. (laughs) Um, But did you want to add anything else at the end? Not that I can think of. I'm sure later tonight I'll say, you know, something like, well, why didn't I bring this up? Why didn't I bring that up? But but no, I really just appreciate the invitation, and it means a lot to me. I, I, I think especially right now in the world, it seems... It seems kind of odd to concentrate so much on maybe art making or that kind of thing. Um, but, but it is important and I, and I kind of go up and down on it, uh, especially right now, um, with everything happening in the world and so many other more important concerns, but it is hard even for myself to be reminded, but, but the arts, they are special and they are important to us and we, we have to protect it and we have to stay involved in it. And so it's important. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Um, you know, I think about that all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I think that this program is just like, it's such a great resource for the community in Birmingham. And so yeah. we, Really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to share your work with us. So, and your thoughtful um, process. It means a lot to me to to do this. So, thank you. Uh, (laughs) Okay. Um, Well, we'll see you later. And thanks. Bye.